Everyone, please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 22nd, 2024, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. We're now on to items to be presented. Our first presentation is regarding 614 Cookman Avenue Redevelopment Plan Amendment. Good evening, folks. My name is Beth McManus. I'm one of the city's planning consultants, and I'm just going to give a, a very brief overview uh, and introduction for the presentation that you're about to see. So this evening, we have a, a presentation about a potential change or a proposed change to the CBD redevelopment plan for the site at 614 Cookman Avenue, although it also does have frontage on Lake Avenue. We're going to hear about a proposal to have uh, a portion of that building occupy by uh, a company referred to, or known as Vidya that does uh, recording space and, and some other complimentary uses. And with that, I'm going to turn things over to uh, to the folks that are going to do the presentation. So if I may enter your character, we have 614 Cookman LLC. I'm returning for the owner of the property, as I indicated, 614 Cookman LLC property. This is our application, lot 2404, lot 6. If the board is unaware, it is a blue lot, meaning it goes right from Cookman over the lake. Area. It's somewhat unusual, plus it is a blue lot. Obviously, it's in the CD redevelopment area. It's both subject to the Cookman Avenue retail core regulations as well as the CBD use regulations. In front of the building, that both part of the foot's on Cookman Ave, so that they get the Cookman Ave retail core regulations. The back part on Lake Ave, subject to the CBD mix use. The reason we're here is we have a proposed tenant, Vidya, that is looking to lease approximately 14,000 square feet of building for its business. It will have in there, as indicated in the proposed plan amendment, recording and production space, sound and music, video recording and production, national rehearsal space, and a music store right on Lake Avenue. What I'm going to do is follow up Roy Lamana. He's going to provide some brief oversight into what is going to be planned for that facility. It's also, yeah, I'm going to work the computer with we'll the slides. If you can start first with your affiliation with it. Yeah, so I started the, uh, uh, 10 years ago. You know, uh, grew up around here, went to Milltown North, went to Brookdale Community College, uh, been in the music business especially in my entire life. So, you know, started at 18, uh, 32 started video for about $3,000, uh, built it up. Uh, to it's now a four hundred million dollar company, employing uh, about one hundred and thirty employees. Uh, we have offices currently in Beverly Hills, um, uh, Dubai, London, Lagos, Nigeria, and uh, hopefully at Red Park. Uh, of the one hundred and twenty employees, we have about fifty to sixty in this location. Um, all you know, working during the day. We're currently in Belworth, so we're kind of move to like more music count. Um, and right now, you know, our primary business is that you know, we do distribution of music, music videos, and content. You now, the interest in Asbury Park is based upon the history of Asbury Park and music, and also continuing what is going on with Asbury Park in terms of the music scene that we have and bringing down the district to plan for further production, you know, music recording studios. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I went to my first concert uh, at Stone Pony, you know, and yeah, so it's just the idea of like, you know, now that I'm in a better position to kind of get back and kind of help, you know, build the legacy of, uh, you know, build upon the legacy of Asbury Park. Yeah, 
Uh, what I want to do then is go through the different floors on six fourteen Copenhagen app where you would be occupying space. So just describe. To the left, we have Copenhagen app. To the right, we have Lake app. Just a little bit of the layout and that space within the building is going to be utilized. Yeah. So, so I mean, the space is essentially conceptualized as like what I would call like uh, we work kind of meets Soho House kind of thing. So it's, it's mostly like a collaborative space where people come in and have access to like, you know, a music facility that they wouldn't otherwise have access to. When they first come in, there's a record store. So one of the things that we do as a company is that we do distribution of vinyl records. We put out, you know, Usher, we were the independent company that had Usher at the Super Bowl this year. We put out the Color Purple soundtrack. We're doing, um, you know, uh, the remastering, remixing, and distribution of Above the Rim and things like that. So vinyl is kind of a big thing for us, especially as it gets more popular. So we thought, why not put a, a, a vinyl record store uh, right off of Cooking up there. And then as you come in, you know, the concept is, you know, there would be a uh, key card access into the facility, and in the facility, you know, uh, individuals would basically be able to pay, like, uh, what I would call, like, a, uh, almost like a gym membership, so, like, a nominal $20 a month kind of thing, and then you have the ability to kind of work within the facility, uh, have a desk, and then also, if you wanted to kind of use, you'd have credits to kind of use the different kind of uh, studios. So it could be a podcast studio, um, you know, it could be a recording studio, it could be something where you're doing editing or photography. So, you know, one of the things that inspired me is that, you know, my office currently is at Bellworks, it's actually a second tenant at Bellworks, believe it or not. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, having kids just kind of, you know, just really hang out within, you know, and do their homework. And it's a really kind of nice environment. So I said, well, why don't, you know, I, I kind of match that up with a creative facility so people could, you know, like, you know, who otherwise may not have interest, kind of get introduced to the arts. Now I've seen here you have a number of studio rooms you also have on there a stage. What yeah. is that stage? Um, yeah, so it's not like a stage, like it's sort of an, I'm not trying to go ahead and have it with Stone I mean, um, it's mostly just like the idea that um, a, a big component of what we're doing is, is going to be education. So we want people to kind of learn how to like, you know, use cameras and use different like, you know, computers and mix and, you know, master and things like that. And so a lot of it is going to be like, kind of like, you know, it might be fireside chats, it might be kind of like an open classroom environment. So it, it's meant to kind of be more like that. Um, if there's any performance, I would say it's like going to be more like a acoustic, but we're not going to have anything, you know, that would uh, certainly bleed out and, and you know, be extremely noisy. But it, that's not going to be open to the public. So yeah, no, yeah. So, so the idea is that like, one of the things that, you know, is important is that like, um, is that we know who's in a facility and that's a safe facility. And so, you know, by, by individuals kind of paying like a $20 a month thing, like we will know who, and it'll be key card access. So we'll know who's in there and, and who's moving around. So like, we, we don't want to have an environment where, you know, people are, are buying tickets and they're coming in and we don't know who they are or whatever. It's, it's important that like, yeah, it, it, that it's, it's kind of a, a, like, um, for lack of a better word, a closed community that, you know, there's, there's some KYC that's going on. So it, so it, it is a, a safe environment. Now you indicated about saying, I just want we're going to touch upon in terms of the soundproof of the facility to make sure it doesn't bleed out either to the adjacent businesses or out on either side. Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 I mean, we're putting a considerable amount of money into it. Um, you know, we already have, we're building studios in our other offices. Um, those are being built right now in uh, London and uh, Lagos in Nigeria. Um, but the one in Beverly Hills is built. And you know, in that space, we actually have a, uh, a high-end jewelry store that sells, you know, half a million dollar watches right above us. We have tennis right below us in Beverly Hills. In the, in the, um, and, and that room, you know, we were able to mitigate sound that there was no complaint. So uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue here, but we're going to certainly hire. So you have, you have the perfect professional tech. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not going to be like a live night uh, kind of thing. We're going to try and make it, you know, really stay there. All right. In terms of the employees, you said you're going to have about 50 employees in the facility, am I correct? Correct. And that's going to be a lot of them during the course of the day during the work, am I correct? Correct. Right. So that would activate the downtown um, as opposed to restaurants that have night places, am I correct? Still correct. That's all I have. I have, I have multiple questions. questions. Yeah. You can go first. Um, so I have a few. Um, I know that many 
recording studios and places where recording and um, performances take place, those buildings are built with many inches of concrete. And I know this is an old building. Mm -hmm. And I know this building was not built for sound. You spoke about your building in Beverly Hills and that's adjacent to a jewelry stop that doesn't complain, but you've got people living nearby. And so I just want to know what the plan is for them because it is an old building yeah. and it wasn't built for the sound that I think you're going to put in there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, so, I mean, a couple things to that. So, so I, I don't think the sound is going to be really that considerable because we're not doing any like live rehearsals. So there's not going to be like any like live instrumentation really going on um, that would kind of create like most of the noise. But I, you know, I do know that like we have to mitigate it regardless of even if someone was you know sleeping above us uh, because uh, there are other recording studios. So if you know if, if for instance someone is on the floor making noise like it's, and it's not mitigated properly, like Studio A, B, and C would essentially you know and the podcast studios would, would basically be you unusable know, because you know the noise would leave the nose room. So so I, 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 we need to be able to manage the noise at a level. That a microphone in any one of these studios, you know, with a high level of sensitivity, wouldn't be able to pick up sound from adjacent rooms. So, so you know, so if we're able to mitigate that, which we have to for the sake of our business, um, it certainly won't go out to someone that's sleeping 500 feet away. Okay, and you, you had mentioned that the stage would be used for educational purposes. So you're not planning on putting performances in there where people pay to come in and watch. No, yeah, yeah, it, it, like, yeah. I, I, it's it's not that, that's not kind of facility. Like I, I don't want the liability of having performances in which people are, are like dancing. You know, like our, our like our goal is not to do like uh, you know be um, like a house of independence or something like that. Like that's that's not like and that's not the nature of business. No, that's not the nature of business. And, and again, like you know, we're not like. We're not going to be selling tickets or you know having anyone. It, it, like everything that we're doing is, is kind of built around the community. So like you know, so the stage is kind of similar setup to what we have here, which is like it's more like a auditorium, you know, kind of setup. So you had mentioned that there would be about a, a twenty dollar nominal fee per month, and you also mentioned this is a place where kids can hang out and learn yeah. things. I don't know that the kids in our community necessarily have twenty dollars a month to yeah. pay for a membership. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, and, and so that's something obviously we're you know we're cognizant of. So like, so the thing to me is not really so much on the price point. Um, we want to make it accessible. Um, you know, I, I'm on a you know the local committee for the Newark All Stars. We hire a lot of people from Newark All Stars. We also work with Boys and Girls Club of Asbury. Like, this is you know that is something that we are very uh, cognizant of. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like what we're trying to solve, you know, whether it's through like subsidies, subsidies, or like partnerships with like you know corporate partnerships or whatever. You know, the important thing is that like what I've learned by working with the All Stars is that it is important that there is like you know um, uh, that people like kind of uh, like give back. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 that's two way street, so to speak. So it's not just like you know open to everyone, but at the same time, like people coming in and it's accessible, but also requires like. You know, like um, them to kind of be part of the community. If that makes sense. I don't know if I'm like wording this correctly, but like, you know, but the idea is that yeah, we are. I don't want to make it like exclusionary. Like, like we don't, like, we don't ensure that people yeah. in Asbury Park and those that could otherwise afford twenty dollars, they still have access to programs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I think there's a variety of ways that we can achieve that. You know, but I think if I just make it like kind of free, I'm going to have to one run a business and two. Um, you know, I don't think that's going to achieve what we're listening to either. So, but I didn't go to the mezzanine and the second floor. If I can make it just for a minute. We have a mezzanine, it's just collaboration space, am I correct? Correct. And then you have your offices upstairs, am I correct? Correct. Sorry to interrupt. That's okay. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm finished. Thank but you. by the way, I'm also open to suggestions. So, like, so these are things that we're, you know, we are looking to figure out. Yeah, so those those were my, my main concerns. Eileen hit most of mine. Um, uh, to her point, you know, what we do with the recreation department is we provide, say, uh, beach cards for people who can't afford our beach access uh, in Esbury Park during the week. So maybe we could do a card or something for kids involved who want to be involved in music yeah. and can't afford the $20. 
Um, so I like the idea. I think it's I think it's a very cool idea. I think it fits Asbury. I just don't want to be screamed at every time I go to Taka for dinner about sound. Yeah. So that would be wonderful if we could just make sure that that doesn't happen. So when I'm envisioning this, is it is it? So my son was in Lake House, and I know he's here. So there's like separate rooms where kids get guitar lessons on, in one room and then the big band in the other room. Yeah. And then none of that sound mixes, which is yeah. what I'm envisioning your yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, very similar, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then an open space where the stage is and who's performing there. So yeah, so, so, I mean, so the stage is kind of like, so like with the stage, it's really meant to be like, again, like it's not the sole purpose. Like during, um, for 95% of the time, it's, there's gonna be like collaborative open, like that's like very so you know, so much like having like this where like you'd see it in a co-working space. It's just that if we're having like um, and are people going to be playing music at these desks? I guess is what I'm asking. No, 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 no. So, so they're going to be like working like they do it. If you're okay. if you're if you're in a bell works, like a lot of kids. No, but I know co works. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so in the open space, like a lot of kids after school will just come and like kind of what I used to do at the library. Like you go there, you just work. So you're not at home, you're not whatever, and you're you know, you're working and you kind of. You know, you're out of the house and you're doing your homework and, and whatever. And then if there's something like, let's just say we have a, um, a rep from Apple who's going to be talking about like the importance of like playlisting and how to get your stuff. We, I mean, we have a lot of really good relationships because we work with like a lot of high profile artists. So like we can have someone who's like a, a high profile, you know, um, mixing engineer, uh, just giving like a little talk on like the best practices to like our, you know, so like think of it as almost like, um, like what you do at like meetup.com, like, like a meetup really. Okay. Um, that's that's for the purposes of, of the community. So I, I think one of the key things is that you do have studios here and they can't go, the sound can't exceed that room into another room. Right. Otherwise you're yeah. interfered. So you have to be sure that it's soundproof enough that it can't escape those individual rooms. Yeah. And yeah. that's where predominantly the, the, no, the music would be in these. Yeah, I mean, and, and, I mean, all my employees would be working above this also. So like, so. You know, like if I had like a KISS reunion tour here, it wouldn't be great for anyone, including okay. my business. Okay. Which is, you know, like this, like I don't know, this is kind of like, again, like it's, it's meant to be part of the community and kind of uplifting. Um, but also, you know, the thing that we make our money with, all my employees will be working above this, so they can't be disturbed as well. On a conference call, and hearing someone yell, or scream, or play. Or and if we wanted to talk to your neighbors, you said that uh, your neighbors in Beverly Hills are really sick. Really have no problem with it. We could talk to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, okay. I don't know them. Uh, I think, our, I think directly above us is the Demelios. So um, I don't know if they'd answer me, but okay. I, can, I, can, I can okay. ask them. And then, and then the jewelry store is the top store. Okay. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm more than happy to give references. Like I said, I've been in the community my entire life. So you know, like, we've had we've had years where people have told us. I'll give you an example: the Asbury Hotel that there would be no sound issue, and yeah. then we spent a summer being screamed at because of the sound yeah. on the Asbury Hotel. So, any references of around the Beverly Hills structure that would be really great for us, yeah. just so we can confirm what you're saying. I'm yeah, sure yeah, what you're yeah. saying. I, I, I also live here. Yeah, I live here. Um, yeah. But they're not going to call you; they're going to call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, that's why. Yeah, we, we, I work out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that was that was part of my point too. I watched when the lake house was built; like the concrete between the floors was like this deep because it was built just just yeah. for that. Well, I only know it because I go when I walk through. You you don't hear m my kid in the big band with the guitar players. Which yeah, I mean, by design, it would be a catastrophe if we could, uh, because no one would ever record in the studio, which you could hear in the adjacent studio. Right. Well, no food or drink people living around you. No, I know that. What I'm saying is that the, the threshold, like in this studio, if I had a microphone with the preamp turned up, that had a sensitivity where air coming out of the vent would be disrupting. Like the, the threshold is is much is much lower. Um, in, in, you know, like so even if you said I don't care about the neighbors, like for us to have a successful business, like our you know the, the bar we would need to meet is, it will be much higher because. Of the necessity of the space, just like you know, and no food or space. drinks in the space, right? Uh, I mean, you know, we'll do like snacks, like okay. you know, so like uh, like just on the restaurant. Okay, just like, checking, yeah, 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 just checking, like, Andy, just checking. What are your hours of operation? Um, yeah, I mean, just I would say normal business hours. Uh, you know, uh, 
I mean, I would say like 9 a.m. to like 10 p.m., you know, something like that. You know, around yeah, the weekends, yeah, or is that coming on the weekends, or you would accommodate them? Yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say, I would say on, the, on the weekends it would, it would be open as well, but like, I, you know, I don't want it to be like a, you know, like a, no. like a midnight, no. like midnight, yeah. like, yeah. whatever. But predominantly, when you look on the second and third floor, yeah. imagining the second floor, actually, where you have your offices, so there's going to essentially be regular office hours. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was 100% your regular office hours. Right? Okay. That's okay. okay. So the studios wouldn't be open for overnight or Saturday and Sunday. Well, I think so. I, I think Saturday, Sunday, daytime hours because it, you know I think that's that part of it, especially you know. Um, but like during daytime, you know, it's not going to be like a. It's not going to be like you know a lot of studios in the city like they you know they operate at like two three a.m. But that's not yeah. the the idea. That's not what we're trying to like the environment. We're trying to create. Any other questions? No, they yes. No, so that's fine. That? Um, I had a I had a number of questions that have actually been answered during the presentation, so I appreciate that. I was most concerned about sound mitigation. Uh, but I'm I'm pleased to hear your answers and and I understand the the need about the industry needs might actually uh, be stronger than the residential concerns in the area but notwithstanding I would anticipate that if there's going to be a redevelopment plan amendment there would certainly be sound mitigation standards in place and so who actually ensures that those on the behalf of the city who ensures that we have those sound mitigations in place well we can do a report and then that report can get incorporated to any approval so I you know, I think that's going to be a multi-pronged approach. There'll be regulations in place. They'll have to demonstrate compliance with those regulations as part of both their planning board approval and to the extent that it overlaps into uh, uh, construction code and construction issues, it would be confirmed at that time as well during the, the fit out. That's it? Those are my only questions. It's a relatively straightforward uh, plan amendment compared to some of the others that have been considered. Lillian or Fred, any questions? Okay, so we thank you for your presentation. We're hoping you stay around because if public have questions, that'll be during the public session. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Our next presentation is by Porta at Asbury LLC for a redevelopment project at 911 Kingsley Street, Block 3901, lots 5 through 9. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Appreciate it. My name is Sal Alfieri. I'm an attorney at Cleary Can G. Can people in the back here? I can't. No, so. okay. I'll speak a little louder. I think our microphone is really terrible. Microphone. I mean, we should look into new microphones because it's not the Is this any better? Yeah. Any better? Yeah, I'll speak with more bass. Uh, my name is Sal Alfieri. I'm from Cleary, Giacobbe, Alfieri, and Jacobs. I represent the applicant here tonight, Porter at Asbury Park, LLC. Uh, we're going to be making a presentation for you tonight related to a proposed redevelopment and expansion of the existing uh, restaurant space that is commonly known around the town as Porta. Uh, the first person that's going to be speaking for us tonight is Jared Moran. Once we get the technology uh, up and running. He's going to go over the plans generally, give you an idea of, of the scope of the project and, and, and you know, what after two multiple TRCs, what we came up with in, in a collaborative effort that we think will really benefit the city. Uh, after that, we also have Sean Delaney, who's here, who's going to be able to touch on some planning and engineering issues at the, or questions that may pop up. And then we also have representative and owner of the LLC who will be able to answer any operational questions. Okay.
So good evening, uh, everybody. This, um, my name is Jared Moran. I am a principal and landscape architect for Bowman Consulting Group. Um, we were responsible for the design of the, for the, the ex ex park expansion and building expansion. I'm going to walk you through the proposed design uh, that we currently have in place. Uh, as you can see on the screen right here, the, uh, the, the project site is the existing Florida Asbury Park restaurant uh, and includes the adjacent lots between the existing Florida site and First Ave. So as you can see, uh, Florida, the lot um, is bound by Kingsley Street to the east, First Ave to the south, and Second Ave to the north. And uh, yeah, so, so the project uh, we can go to the, okay, okay, so yeah, right here, what we're looking at now, this is the uh, plan view of the proposed uh, improvements. You can see, so, so yeah, so, um, you know, so how, how I'm going to break, walk you through the site, it's, uh, it's we've basically broken it down into these, these areas. We have the existing quarter restaurant on the top left, Screen uh, to the right, the existing port of mark that's the existing improvements. Uh, uh, sorry, west of the port of rest, the existing port of restaurant is where the expanded uh, restaurant will go. That is approximately 3,600 square feet. And uh, to the top right, we have the bocce area, the gaming area, and the existing cottage that exists on the corner of Kingsley and First Ave. And then in the green, in the lower area, will be the event space, and that is where the uh, proposed tent, events, event tent, and outdoor uh, entertaining area will, will exist. So, um, so yeah. So looking at the, uh, you know, the, the color rendered plan view here, um, we could see. Uh, you know, <coughs> walk you through the, the improvements within the area, the surface materials, and uh, then I have some 3D perspectives that will help everybody kind of understand the site a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, so the restaurant expansion, uh, as I said before, is about 3,600 square feet inside with the, the expanded kitchen, and then we'll also house the restaurants. Um, the what? What did you just say? Uh, there'll be restrooms in oh. there for, for men and women. Um, so uh, overall, the area of the project is approximately 1,500 square feet. And just to give a little bit of a background on this, so we work with the uh, TRC. We presented to them uh, in the summer and got received some comments. We had two working sessions with the planners of the TRC and uh, went back, made the adjustments, and went back to the TRC for a second meeting. Had you know compliments uh, from the design and the efforts that went into working with the TRC. So you know we're excited, really excited about the project. We think it's you know really come a long way since the inception of the concept and working with the TRC. So um, so yeah. So with the restaurant extension. Um, in the lower left hand corner to the north of that is you'll see the two gray areas those are that's trash enclosure those are going to be surrounded on the uh you know all sides as well as the roof that'll help with the you know any rain but also from the adjacent buildings uh the windows they're not going to be looking at trash so that'll, that'll kind of help to the north where uh along second out you see there's um a bike rack, so so we'll get it right there, Sean. So we're we're proposing a bike storage shelter, which will house approximately eight bikes. Right, so yeah, moving on to the um, the top right, the bocce and the cottage area. Uh, there will be a connection to the existing port park, right? So um, 
the, the overall design style of the, uh, the expanded park improvements were more or less taken from this existing quarter park. It's natural materials. It's, it's more of a, a, a national park design style, right? So very uh, you know, rough and rugged materials, very natural feel. So there's a connection point to, uh, to the Bachi area at the, at the top there, as well as a centrally located walkway that will uh, connect First Avenue entrance to the existing park. So, as you can see in the, uh, you know, within that bocce area, we have two bocce courts. One on the right hand side will be, uh, we'll have a, a surrounding wall, right, like a, a typical bocce court. And then the one on the left is going to be more of a flexible for the second bocce court, but uh, we can pull the tables and chairs out when, when we need to. Um, along Kingsley Street, you can see there's a, an overhead structure with some tables and chairs under there and a, a satellite bar. And below the cottage is a more secluded area that will be some various seating elements with the, the fire pit. All right, so moving down on the event space, so we have, you know, the main area is that green, right? So that's synthetic turf, that's where the, the, the tent will be located, right? The tent is approximately 80 by 50 uh, feet, right? So 4,000 square feet. Um, the reason for the synthetic turf is so that we can, uh, you know, put, put this tent can be there for an extended period of time and not, you know, impact the uh, surface of the, uh, of the ground. So this is what it'll look like when the tent is not there. If we go to the next slide, this is, you know, uh, the, the um, area of the tent. One of the things that did come up in the TRC meetings, we had the tent that was abutted right up against First Avenue and turned 90 degrees. So one of the comments from TRC was, let's try and take that away from First Ave. And what we have is a, uh, a wood structure, uh, an overhead structure that kind of wraps around the building. So from First Avenue, when you're looking, and uh, we have some, some slides uh, that I can show you what that's gonna look like, but it'll be um, the transition, right? We buffered a little bit from the tent, so it's not gonna be the tent. Uh, also along First Avenue, it's hard to see here, but we have shade trees that are you know, very closely planted along First Avenue, and uh, that's going to also help with the buffering of, of the tent overall. Um, adjacent, you know, you see that uh, we have two fire pits uh, right between the tent and First Avenue, two fire pits with some small seating areas, and then various other seating areas of you know, small and, and large. So that is the overall. Ma'am, can we turn our phones yes. on mute? The rings are getting on the side, but no, I'm not turning my phone on mute. No, actually, no. Go ahead, ma'am. So, yeah, so, um, you know, just, just walking through the, the yeah. surfacing elements. Uh, you know, we're, we're more natural, so. It's disruptive. Blue stone, yeah, you got Slag, uh, paving, right? So it's more of a natural. Uh, Look, and uh, so, yeah. so what we're looking at here, this is a bird's eye view from over the tent, right? Looking into the, uh, you know, Kingsley Street is north, uh, a page north. And, uh, you know, we're looking over the improvements, the bocce area, the small seating area. Uh, as, as well. but, and you can see here the, the surface material we're looking to use uh, some bluestone flag, uh, bluestone similar to the existing quarter park, some decomposed granite, and, uh, and, and some concrete. So we're varied types of materials, but all on the natural side. Uh, as far as lighting, you know, we're looking to just keep that very low key, uh, you know, similar to the uh, existing quarter park with the overhead string lights. We have some string lights, some low bollards, uh, but it's not it's not meant to you know light light the place up more for security and safety purposes. Jared, if yeah. it, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but the design was intended to almost activate portions of First Avenue and along um, 
along the beachfront there so that when people are walking by it, it's inviting there's 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 activity going on they can it's almost as if if a, if a and the intention is is that if you're walking down first avenue you you see activity you want to go and and participate in what's happening yeah. in the porter park area that's no that's right that, that's one of the one of the main elements from the trc that we heard from them is that they wanted to open up the views from kingsley and first into the park Right, so they didn't want us to kind of wall off or buffer the, the uses from this expansion to the road itself. So, so that was one of the, um, the main elements along the right hand side of the page. You know, beyond that fence, you can't really see we have a, a low seawall right along First Ave. That's going to be, yeah, you know, right here. So it's going to be a concrete wall that's uh, colored in a similar color as the building to kind of tie in right the uh, the, the site elements. So right, that was, that was one of the um, items from the TRC that we definitely welcome that we can you know make the plan stronger. So yeah, so this is this view here. We're looking at a ground level shot from First Ave towards the existing quarter building. This is that central walkway. We got the tent on the left hand side and uh, the uh, fire pit seating area in the bocce to the right. This is another shot, uh, ground level shot from the Bachi area. The street is to the left. The cottage is in the rear. All right, this is the uh, main event space. Uh, you know, so we're seeing some standing tables and more like a, an entry into the event space, foyer almost. Uh, but then you got the, the, the bisecting walkway there to the left and first down. Uh, top of page. Another shot underneath that structure, the tent, the event tent is to your left. Uh, another shot, the fire pit, uh, first half is, is what we're seeing there in the back. So this is the shot right here. So this is from first half sidewalk looking at the tent. Right, and the next shot, so, so you know, this is what we're, we're going to see with the tents up and the tents down. This is what, what you're going to see. So, so that, uh, that structure frames the tent, but it also provides uh, more or less a frame to the synthetic turf space. Use the flexible open space when, when the tent is down. Another shot from the turf looking back towards the first half. And then we have the um, trash enclosure with the building expansion, right? So you see the building expansion there. What we envision is the building expansion is going to be a few feet higher, but you can see we're, we're, we're planning on lightening up the, uh, the, the facade material just to kind of blend in with the height of the uh, existing building. Uh, you can see the tent, uh, the, sorry, the bike shelter right there and the trash enclosure to the right and left. And that's just another shot of the trash enclosure area along the second half. All right, so I think that that, that concludes the presentation from, from my standpoint. Okay, so that's instead of waiting to the end, I'm going to ask some questions about your presentation sure. while you're up. So the additions, you're adding a pergola uh, seated bar. How many seats at the seated bar? At the bar, at the satellite bar? Sat uh, you're correct, satellite bar. How many seats? Uh, I'm not sure if there'll be any seats there. I, I think it's, it's meant to be more of a stand up, uh, get your drink and you know, sit down in one of the uh, many table seating areas. Okay, you're adding a bocce court, no problem. You're adding a garden with fire pit with seating. How many seats? Uh, well, we're showing uh, right now, I mean, we're looking at uh, I didn't do a, uh, a total count. Okay, no problem. You're adding a pizza trailer. Will there be seating? If so, how many? Um, okay, let's see. All these questions are going to capacity. So if you want me just to ramble them off and then you give an answer at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for the outdoor space capacity wise, we added about uh, 200 people. Okay, I'm going to continue to ramble on. And you got a canopy structure. How many seats? Yeah, yeah. That, so that's that's the entire expanded area. 
That's the tent. You got two dip. You got the tent and you list the canopy structure. And you have the, the event space. Right, so the tent and the event space, that's okay, not okay, okay. But We're looking for numbers and we can get them down the road, but we're looking for total capacity if it was maxed out. Understood. Yeah. Let me, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, okay, so I'll give you the rest of the questions so you can yeah. get back to us. You're adding a water feature, so again, the question is going to be how many seating. You're adding a seating wall, which you show people sitting on it, so how many people could possibly sit on that? You're adding a 50 by 80 tent. What would the capacity be for a uh, sitting event, say a wedding, and what would it be for an open event, say a concert, so what would the capacity be for that 50 by 80 tent? Yeah, let me, let me talk to her. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get you. Uh, okay, just because a lot's being added mm -hmm. where this could become, you're saying 200 would be 2,000. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm probably not the best mm -hmm. person to, to, you know, answer that question. Okay. So, you mentioned the trash enclosure. Do you have the dimensions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sean, civil engineer. He's okay. The trash and then you mentioned bike storage. You said it's enough for eight bikes. I'm going to tell you that's not enough, guys. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> that's not enough. Uh, the other stuff is parking, parking, parking. Parking, possible directions to parking, parking. Will the tent be up all the time or taken down when you're not having scheduled events? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave that. For okay, yeah, we have the operations for to be able yeah. to handle those. So any tent questions hold off for somebody else? Yeah, we have, uh, we have one of the owners here who will be able to uh, provide okay. some more insight. I think they were all my questions for you. And again, they all go back to like capacity. capacity. If every one of your areas was at the max, yeah, it looks like a lot more than 200. Yeah, let me. Uh, let okay, me, no problem. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Can I ask, do you have an aerial view of the entire block? Because I believe that event space has residential homes behind it. Yeah, to the, to the west. That's right. So that event space sort of butts up against people's homes. Yeah, so the, the plan is um, at ground level, there will be a six foot high um, solid fence, right? So at least ground level, and there'll be some planting to buffer, uh, you know, at, at a ground level. What do you have? Where's your sound mitigation person? Do you have somebody here who's going to talk to us about sound? Because it sounds like it's going to be extraordinarily loud to anyone who lives in that area. If you've got 200 people in your yard, your neighbor next door. Or, or a wedding with a DJ or a band. And you have the vibe. And then you have two apartment buildings on that block. Yeah. Do you have a sound engineer here? We do not have a sound engineer. but so the, the Jim, if you want to come up and introduce yourself and speak, please. I'm uh, an architect uh, as well as one of the owners. Um, so anyway, there is there is a there is a, a buffer between um, the tent and the building next door. The, 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 uh, the driveway access is there. We are working with our tent company. They have sound attenuation panels that can be part of the system, and they they give us a rating that we can get back to you with kind of an engineered report on that. We're also planning on adhering to all of the, the uh, noise ordinance requirements of that site and of the zone in terms of 10 o'clock stop, all of that kind of stuff. Um, the last thing I want to do is, is, is annoy the neighbors the sound, <coughs> uh, because I know it's just going to be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So I will make sure that, that the tent is designed in a way that the sound is attenuated and that we conform to all of, all of the regulations, just like the Snow Pony does, just like we do currently. In terms of when you have to stop the music. I want to speak to capacity. Well, that, that, since you're on tents for a second, let me ask you a couple questions that so you can get us again. Jim, can you just sound as a microphone? Sure. Don't need it tonight, but do, you know, follow up questions. So the tent, on one plan, it says it has tinted windows, but on another set of plan, it says it has clear windows. So that's a question that can be worked out. Don't be a problem. And going back to what Amy said about the sound. So 
The only way sound can get out of this tent is the doors. The windows cannot be opened and the flaps cannot be removed. Correct. So how do you supply AC in the summer and heat in the winter? There, there's uh, And where, there, where are they depicted on the plan? They are in the, um, just to the north of the tent. There will be a mechanical unit that will heat and cool the tent. Okay. Just like, just like if you were to go to a wedding in somebody's yard, there would be heating and cooling like that. Um, the, the, the idea is that the, wherever we have, um, neighbors, we would not have any glass or anything clear for privacy from both sides. Um, we would, we would, We will go to to you know significant expense to make sure that the, the tent is soundproof because okay. I I know having having owned many restaurants certainly in the downtown and in 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 residential areas that even Can if I the outdoor space Jim listen when we talk when we bring up the pony the pony's been here fifty years so people have gotten used to that sound or paradise but we you're asking for us to grant you permission to expand your space that is going to have a substantial increase in sound and capacity, but just focusing on sound. So the wedding space is going to have either bands or a DJ, I assume. Yes. And then the outdoor space, I mean, you already, I eat at your restaurant a lot, you have a band out in the back, lovely, but I assume that's going to increase a little bit in your, while no, you're outdoor we would space. No, we would, we would have no, no live music in beyond where we do now, okay. except for the tent. So let me, let, me, let me explain programmatically what my intention is with the plan. So the, the event space is only a private event space. It will, it will serve no other function for us. It will not be expanded dining. It will be, there'll be no late night activity there that isn't part of like a wedding or a graduation party. So it will only be activated for private events. It will operate in, in essence, independent of our restaurant and in any late night activity. The entire area that you see around that tent is specifically for weddings and private events. When we talk about the fire pit area and the bocce area, that would be an expansion of our, our, our Porta Park. But the idea was, again, that would be catering to private events. Like, let's say, for example, Sal's law firm wanted to have an event in the summer and they wanted to have 15 people. They would come and rent that space. That's what the satellite bar is for. It would accommodate that. So it's not, it's not open to the public. It, it will be open to the public at different times, but what the main purpose of that is to have smaller, intimate spaces. As you can see, they're kind of, they're all designed as kind of, int they're, they're not, it's not one big space. They're smaller spaces. So smaller groups of people. What happens for us is, is, is it would be a nightmare if that whole area was just open to the public all the time. It just it would be it, a nightmare for us too. Yes. It wouldn't work. It would be a nightmare for us too. It wouldn't work. Just, just from a security point of view, it wouldn't work. So, so what, what we're envisioning is, luckily, you know, as we all are enjoying the successes of Asbury and growth of Asbury Park, there's more and more demand for private events here. People want to be here. Um, talking to Brian from iStar, he is dying for big event space in the zone. Bringing people here, they end up buying his condos, they end up not only coming here, but then going to other restaurants after they might leave here after a wedding. So the idea is we're fine with the business that we're doing at Porta in terms of our dining and our late night business. We don't want to expand that at all. What we want to expand is our private party business. So yes, would we, would we have that bocce ball area open to the public? Yes, but we also might have it be rented out for a private event. That's why we have the public space of our existing park. And what we're doing is creating basically outdoor rooms Really, I think beautifully designed, beautiful surfaces, be you know, well appointed that will attract private parties of, of all sizes. We don't plan on having live music out there. The music would be just about the, 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 the for, for the weddings or the private events. That's that it. That is live music outside. It's in a tent. It's so I would love to see the specs on that soundproof tent if you could get them. To Absolutely, us. yes. That would be awesome. So we could check with others that are using it to see how it impacts their neighbors. Yep, absolutely. Listen, I, we have an aligned agenda here with, with regard to sound. If I, have, if I have neighbors who are not happy with us, it's a nightmare. 
Yes, we know. And I don't want, listen, the other thing is I don't want to be a bad neighbor, right? I live right down the street from here. So I, I, I want to be a good neighbor. Um, I want to accommodate what we have as a real demand for weddings. We can't accommodate. I don't see how a tent is not going to, sound isn't going to leak That's out. Why I, I mean, I've never heard that, Jim. I mean, maybe you have a magical tent that this is going to happen. You're going to send it to us, but I've never heard that in my life. That there's this going to be a tent where sound's not going to be this is not a This is not a soft fabric tent. Okay. These are okay. these are prefab panels that, that, are, that are on a, a very a, sturdy because they're a, snow resistant. Yeah, okay. they're on a metal not, structure. You have to take it up and down wherever there's yeah. a snow fort. They don't make these tents here in the states. These are these are European engineered tents. Mm -hmm. I first discovered these tents actually by going down uh, Ocean Avenue and Deal. <coughs> like one showed up one day. They had an amazing event there. I thought the tent was beautiful. It was not a loose fabric tent. There was a panelized system it's like a prefab panelized building that they that they put up overnight and then took down the next day so these panels are insulated panels that can have sound insulation in them um it's not it's not what you're thinking of as a tent no uh, clearly yeah. so yeah yeah so just get us more information and maybe people who, who use the tent so we can also i can do that we can also get get some uh, i'll get Luckily, the, 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 the company that we're working with that reps this company in, in, um, they're all engineers. So, so we can, we can get all of the information that you need to make both of us comfortable because I, I don't want to go through the expense of doing this and then we just have a major problem. Um, that makes no sense for anybody. But what I'm, what I'm thrilled about with this project is I think that for me, it's a beautiful landscape pro project. Um, it, it's, it's activating that property in a way which I think is, is, is really quite lovely given, given, you know, sort of what's happening around it, the, the pedestrian traffic. Um, you know, I think that it's, to me, much more attractive than putting a, a six-story building on that site is the idea of having something more, much softer, much, much more open and something that, you know, is, is, is um, you know, for the benefit of the community. I don't As think opposed anybody's to, denying that it's a beautiful spot, but you're in somebody's backyard. I mean, that's that is. I, I understand. That's Listen, we're we're we have we have late night activity in the building right now with neighbors, and we've had to mitigate those problems as they occur, and we always have. So you, you said you want to touch on capacity. Uh, capacity. We're we're anticipating that the that, that attempt will accommodate. There'll be no music events in there. These are going to be. Um, tabled events. Tabled events. Tabled and chaired events. Tabled and chaired events. The, the wedding tent. That's yeah. what you're yeah. saying. Yes. You're not going to have a DJ or a band at somebody's wedding? Yeah, I'm not going to. We're not going to have concerts. It's not going to be a concert. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. No, no, no. Well, we're, we're increases to capacity. So I'm like not going to put a thousand people right, right, in there, right. you know, to listen to a rock show. That, that's not what this well, is we about. We didn't know that until you just told us. No, no. That's why I want to speak to right. it. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So I, I, I think that we'll, we've laid it out for about 200 people. In, for, for the events, um, we worked with Laz uh, Parking uh, on a, a, a valet plan, which accommodates all of that. We've worked worked out an ag agreement with with iStar in principle in terms of where that would happen, how that would happen. Laz has worked with us to figure out where the staging would go, so we're not interrupting vehicular flow. We're not backing out onto Kingsley Street. We're not we're not clogging up the sidewalk. I think we have a really beautiful um, uh, valet plan that Sean can speak to in detail. Um, and capacity for the rest of it, like I talked about, what, what I envision it would be, you know, if, 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 the, if the mayor and council wanted to have an event and they needed to accommodate, you know, about 20 people, they could, you guys could come and take over part of that outdoor space. And have and have your own bartender. You could you could if you wanted to do the bocce, you could do the bocce. If you want to do the fire pit, you could do the fire pit. So I'm not seeing this covered with thousands and thousands of people. I that, we, it would be unmanageable for us. What is your total capacity then? Total capacity for the entire everything. For the I don't know off the top of my head. I don't know. You're going to have to give us a ballpark number down the road. Yeah. Okay. I, I would imagine that if it was at full, I'm just not, not the existing building. Cause I don't want to contradict what our, no. what we, yeah, you know, we, we have agreements with the fire department stuff that I don't want to contradict that. But I would say for, for, for what we're talking about in terms of the new land and its development, 
We're probably at about 100 people for, for outside the tent at full capacity and 200 people for inside the, the tent. Okay, thank you. So since you brought up the parking, uh, you're asking for a loss of nine city parking spots on First Avenue. Here's what, here's what I'm proposing. Okay. Is that when, our, when we have an event and when we have a valet, that we pay for those spaces. Just as if I was parking there for four hours. Those nine spaces would be paid for by us during those times. I'm not asking the city to lose any parking revenue. Okay. How many spots is Laz reserving for your events across the street in the parking lot that's supposed to be for people going to the beach or going to the Stone Pony or anything? How many spots is the city losing in the Laz parking lot for you? I don't, I don't have an answer. I can get you that answer. Thank you. Yeah. And then you have a kiosk for the parking on the sidewalk Are yes. they in the city right away where we still have a five foot passable sidewalk. Uh, we'll make sure that, 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 that there is a passable sidewalk there. Right. And somewhere it said there's going to be a possible interruption on the city sidewalk by drop off and valet parking. These sidewalks are heavily traveled. We know they're heavily traveled, so we can't have them shut down when the stone ponies let out. So that's going to have to be reworked. I understand. I mean, we have, we have valet parking at Pascal and Sabine at Homesick. Uh, we've had it at, there are many times we've had it in, at, at Porta, and we've always been able to manage that situation. And that's one of the reasons we're going with LAS, because they, they're, they're a dual, they, they, they control the lot, and they control the, the, uh, the valet operation, which I think is, is important, because if there's a capacity issue, they'll know about it in, in advance. Right, and the LAS parking lots, and this is something I'm going to have to ask our people down the road. I don't know if uh, Brian Shirk and uh, Starfield are on the hook to provide so many parking spots for... Uh, retail for Madison Marquette. So if they're eliminating more in this parking lot, are we going to be in violation of that agreement? So like, if yeah, we, when you find out from lads, I mean, they're going to be reserving for you. If you're saying you're going to have a wedding with 200 people, they're going to be reserving at least 100 parking spots. So I mean, yeah, I understand. I, I and again, in talking to Brian from uh, from what's the new name of the Starfield? Company? Starfield. Um, he he has so fewer event spaces than he was anticipating having, you know, in the waterfront redevelopment area that I would imagine that the parking calculation took into account. We're basically putting it on our property as opposed to putting it on another property, basically. I'm probably figuring the same thing, but yeah. to not ask the question would be foolish. Uh, absolutely. And I, I, I think I think this is, again, one of these aligned agendas that we have that if parking is a nightmare for our customers, they're not going to do it. So it has to work. So those surface lots are temporary. What happens when that they surface lot gets sold to a developer? Well, my understanding is that there's certain structured decks that are to be built when those triggers are so hit. What happens if that doesn't happen in time for your events? What happens if a lot gets sold to a developer? There's no, a parking garage is not up yet. What happens in the interim? We'll have to figure it out. I need to provide parking for my for my guests, so we'll figure it out. I mean, I can't I can't I can't account for what what may or may not happen. I think right now there is an abundance. If you had the crystal lots. ball, you'd give me the winning lotto number. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, right. That's right. Into me. <laughs> Jim, I'm not understanding this tent clearly. Are you saying that there's a tent and deal no, that you could take was, me to? It was okay. a, for a private event at a private house. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll text you if this summer I see one. I'll if tell you. You could do that uh, yeah, just so I could absolutely. experience it because I'm thinking of like the Asbury's tent. No. That's what I'm thinking of. No, no, no. This is, this is a building Spectacular. that happens to come Spectacular. up and down. I don't know that I've ever seen one. We've never had one before, right? No, no we've never no. had one before. Just, I call it. They do exist. They do exist. It's, it's a panel, it's, it's like a prefab panelized building. That that's, is what it is. We've actually been working with the construction department here in the city to make sure that it's gonna conform if we wanna keep it up year round. Um, and so far, so good. Especially because of the snow load. So I mean, snow load is, the, to me, that is the biggest issue yes. with, with, with soft tents 
is so low. I mean, we listen, we had that, I remember when the governor lifted the, the, uh, the timeline for when you couldn't, couldn't have it up for us in, in, when we had it in the park in Porta and we had to have basically somebody monitor the tent while, if it snowed. This isn't that thing. This, this, this will handle any, any snowfall. Okay. So how many more professionals do you have that are going to make a presentation? Because we didn't expect this to go an hour. So, well, I just we'll just have Sean. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll touch on very quick things that most of it's been said about the presentation. Thank you. Um, so, so, a couple of things. The, the important thing to, uh, to note, um, really regarding as a as planner with regards to the uh, work for the development plan, um, the ball and bulk standards that are required for lot area, lot frontage, uh, building height, all that is compliant. Um, parking, there is no requirement for this use for parking. Uh, we are removing some parking at the, um, where the, the expansion, the restaurant is going that was on site. Um, we, as, as was said, fine, we configured that to really try to provide a, a larger uh, trash enclosure area, recycling area to serve the needs of the expansion as well, covering it with concerns for the neighbors next door looking down upon it. Um, really the, their, the smells and the, the sound and the, the sight of it doesn't drift up to the windows in those areas. Um, there are some, some waivers uh, that would be needed that were pointed out uh, by Michelle's uh, letter. Um, most of them are related to it because the structure is, is a tent as opposed to a standard building. That's not really what was envisioned in the, the development plan um, for this. The, the part of the expansion has a couple as well. Um, there's a, by the expanding, there's a hallway coming off the building about six, almost seven feet that's attached to the face of the building. Creates the building to be over 100 feet. There's got to be a break there, so we would need a waiver for that. Um, some of the the openings on the front end to avoid the solid ratios and the fenestration. The expansion has no uh, windows; just has some door openings. Um, the tent, depending upon what type of panel goes on, they can be have the, the ones with um, with windows that can be seen. The, the doors are all uh, sol uh, glass doors, essentially for light to come in and out. Um, naturally, they're not uh, they're not wood. They're not um, Analyzed or something that would be with the redevelopment plan, so that would need a waiver as well. Um, if they put a solid panel, the event must be a little more private or so, as opposed to having all the, the openings for the windows for everybody to look in or so. They can swap out panels that way too if they need to, especially um, considering on, you know, if they want to do that, especially on the, the western side adjacent to the, uh, the residential development. If they want to look in there or see lights or things popping out, we can make that side solid, um, which would require a uh, side waiver for the fenestration. Um, I mentioned the building material, the doors, we're not providing a, a painted wood or composite door, they're steel doors on the expansion, plus the glass on the tent. Um, the storefront at the bottom of the, um, of the tent up front, uh, I believe will hit the 70% if the, if the window panels are on there. If, uh, you can see that they put the solid panels up, you wouldn't hit that. There's no kick plate provided because it's not a, a, a permanent structure like you would in a um, you know, brick and mortar type of building. That, Build that into it. Um, the facade colors, the, you know, the existing expansion is going to match the existing colors of Porta. The cottage at the corner is going to be uh, repainted, re, uh, resided, or so to match the same colors of the Porta restaurant as well. Um, the tent, um, it's not going to be a white tent, uh, as uh, shown in some of the, the renderings here, it was a, a brownish, uh, little off, off, not a white, not white, but not a dark brown, some of the light beige color, something like that, trying to blend into that natural look. Of the wood, um, so it doesn't, so try to blend in with the surroundings of the park as opposed to being a white, you know, really beacon out through there. Um, there's also a 10 foot uh, buffering for the loading space. The loading essentially would, would, would come straight back into the, uh, into the restaurant park right before the doors, they go right into the kitchen area and pull straight out into the back out onto the road. Um, the improvements on, on the road are shown uh, per the Infrastructure component plans with the master developer for the re restriping and, and reconstruction of that roadway um, on Second Avenue. Uh, First Avenue has the, the curb lines and all that in. The, the streetscape itself has to be finalized and still put in um, by the master redeveloper. The kiosk would be located right in, off the curb line, essentially where a tree pit would go. So there'd be clear space 
um, on the back of the sidewalks, you know, between where the trees would go in that four foot strip between the curb and the back of the tree pits, the kiosk would sit up in that location so it would not interfere with any um, pedestrians walking up and down the, uh, the sidewalk during a, a valley event. So we would lose trees? But no, the trees would stay. Okay. The trees thank are staying there. The kiosk would go next to the tree, between the trees. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, the last piece, I guess, is just talking about the, as we still thought of the valet plan. Um, as Ms. Watt pointed out, it's not the intent to remove any tree, any parking on, along any of the streets for the use would be to come to an agreement with the city to be able to rent or, or purchase those for an event time period um, for the use during the event only. During the rest of the day, it would be, you know, use as normal. And when the event comes up, you know, say pre warned to be, you close those spaces off, reserve them for a select time period. Um, People come in, drop off uh, to the valet, walk into the event, the valet people can drive down to Hex Street, make the U-turn down to Asbury, come back on Kingsley and into the parking lot. At the back, there are about 20 parking spaces right now that have been, um, the agreement is put in place for for LAS to provide on there. Obviously, you know, with 200 people, 20 spaces is not a significant amount. Um, obviously, they're still negotiating, they're still talking with that to see if there are some opportunities for some, uh, some other spaces right now. Um, if you can't, if you don't have valet parking, you're going to park on the streets. You're going to park in the public parking where, where people park right now. Um, and then when they leave, they'd be coming out the parking lot. The valet would run over, pick it up, drive back out along Ocean Avenue, come right up First Street, park in one of those nine spaces. People would pick up their car, back out, and take off again. And they would time that, obviously, on the pickups and stuff to try and do make sure there's no uh, back of a car on the streets um, up there that would interfere with traffic coming up and down First Avenue or Kingsley during normal operations. The operation would run at the same time as the sidewalks being used. I mean, in, in many other uh, municipalities throughout the state, um, restaurants sometimes offer a service right in front of their facility. Doesn't they don't shut the sidewalk down for that? You pick up, pick a key out of the restaurant, you give it to them. They run to a place, they come back, and, and and people are walking up and down while you're getting your valet car. So there's no planned interruption, no closing of sidewalks or anything like that. The idea is to keep. The public area is public and open throughout the whole time, um, and for this used to work and intermingle with that. Um, what I did one question you have about the seat wall that was outside. Um, that was something that um, the board planner had had, uh, had recommended. We want to put some kind of a little bit, a little more of a barrier around the outside just to separate instead of just having a fence there. The fence is down low and it's 48 inches high total, so you can see over it. But providing a seat wall there, it's not just for the anybody entering quarter or anything like that. It's there for the public that they're walking down to be able to sit as well. Um, you can sit and have a conversation with somebody inside, either sitting in one of those fire pits or so too, and interact with them, which is what the the whole plan and whole discussion of the TRC was to really um, bring together and activate the streetscape with the people inside the, the, the porta. You know, on, on a level that could be done. Not saying it's going to be done, or, or so it will be done. The thing, what kind of events are going on? But the ability to see and speak and, and have conversations and, and feel that it's part of the whole thing that, that was something that was very important to the DRC and that they uh, made, made sure that we incorporated this design. Okay. Can you go back to the other picture, please? There. Okay. So where it says restaurant extension, and yeah. maybe I read it wrong. I thought one page said restaurant extension, while another page says proposed kitchen addition. So is it a combination of the two, or is no, it? No, it's just it's kitchen and, and bathroom. Kitchen and bathroom. That's a question that I have too. But wait so a second. Go back to the page where that blue and said restaurant extension. So what is the restaurant extension? It's a kitchen and bathrooms for the the events. So it's a kitchen. And there, there is no and customer the area there. Okay. Zero. So where are the vents and everything for the kitchen, so, so they don't affect the? Neighbors? Okay, so we've already designed that. So it's gonna okay. it's gonna run up across the roof, away away from the neighbor, and up where our existing stack is. It's gonna be right next to our existing chimney. Okay, thank you. Yep, because we that was addressed. The TRC was concerned about that as well. Okay. So um, we 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 worked with our mechanical contractor, and that's no problem. I also want to note that the, the cottage in the corner has been re repurposed um, for like a grab and go type of facility. Um, no cooking or anything in there. Uh, people from the beach come pick up some. You know, no, there will, there will be cooking. There'll be cooking. Yes. Uh, there'll be cooking there. There is a stack as well as coming out of there that has been raised above the, uh, the two second story as required by the, uh, 
uh, redevelopment plan. And Jim, you just mentioned restrooms. So the 200 people in the tent, they're going to be going out of the door, they're going to keep opening the door to go to the restrooms across the way? No, see, see where it says restroom extension? extension? Yeah. They're going to be going in there. The so tent, they're opening the tent door. Right. We'll have a, going across to the. Yeah, we'll have a covering there. And, you know, we'll have a temporary I'm covering. I'm just thinking sound <coughs> again. Every time that door opens, it's more sound going into the neighborhood. That's, that's why I was asking that question. We could do, we could do a, 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 a vestibule if we needed to. I just think it's, at some point that's going to be an issue. Okay. And would you just address how you're going to use the building on the corner? Of Kingsley and First. Okay, so there will it'd be basically a grab and go. So I'm envisioning somebody's on the on the beach. They want to come to Porta, but they don't want to go inside. They don't want to hold. We would design a small menu that Porta like, like we'll call it maybe Porta Light, where um, you, you'd walk up, order, grab your food, and, and and leave with it. You you would not eat in the in our park. And you would not eat in that cottage. You would take it with you and leave. Do you do late night food? What are you thinking for hours? I, we don't know yet. I don't see why not. I mean, if, if that's if on the, the corner right by the body, right? If the pony yeah. let out, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the ponies so we across want lines, right? If people get where the last right parking is built, used to be, right? Yeah, right. The two bungalows. Yeah, yeah. We haven't gotten that far as to what that would exactly be. We just thought it was, I, I find it to be a, a, an attractive kind of little piece of architecture. We didn't want it, we, did, we didn't want to get rid of it. It doesn't really function in any other way other than something like that. So. Well, it's a good initial presentation. Does anybody else have any questions? So I think you heard the majority yeah, of our concerns sure. and, uh, you know, anything else, I guess you can get in touch with Michelle. And if we have other questions, we can let Michelle yeah. know they ask you and we'll go from there. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get you all the information that you requested. I think, uh, you know, I, 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 these are, these are things that I need to ensure for us as well. So thank okay. you. Mayor, would you like them to stay for the public commentary? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And Michelle, did you have any questions or concerns? No. No, because they were they were answered during the presentation. Some of the clarifications, um, of, like about the bungalow, and about that they're requesting design rate waivers from almost every architectural um, requirement in the design portion of the plan because of the nature of the tent. Um, I also um, want a bit of clarification if it's not already clear. Even though the tent appears as a temporary use. This developer is coming to you for as a non-temporary, a permanent use. So this is following the step, same steps for uh, in our order of approvals as an actual structure, meaning it's the same process for as for any of the townhome developments. So it's it's going to be considered permanent development. Okay, you're aware of that. Yes, I am. Okay, yeah. Okay. Again, we thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thank, no, you, thank you. Yeah, and the public's going to ask questions now, so you may want to stick around. I'm going to have somebody stick around. I can't see. Yeah, no problem. problem. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. We're on to matters from City Council. Councilmember Buzz Anderson. Here. Do you have any matters for us? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Council Member Chapman. Yeah, so I just want to give a shout out to Leisha Floyd and Cassandra Dickerson, who hosted a beautiful Black History Month celebration today and honored some of the community members from Asbury Park who really make a difference. They did a great job. Um, and just to let you know that the city designated today as Jessie May Rick's Day for all that she's done for our city. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton. I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Nothing, thank you. Thanks. Mayor Moore. Nothing, thank Thanks. you. Matters from the city manager. Nothing, thank you. Thank you. Matters from the city attorney. Nothing at this time. Thanks, Quinn. May I have a motion to open up the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
public participation portion is now open. Any member of the public who wishes to speak, please use the microphone. State your name and address for the record. There will be a three minute time limit for each speaker. Again, please your name and address for the record. Thank you. Yeah, hi, my name is Sam Gallucci. The address is 360 and 7th Avenue in Hansburg Park. And I'm here to talk about containing costs and burden of consistent taxes. Sam, can you just use the microphone so we can get you on the you recording? All right. No, that? but we're taping it on we're ACTV. It. And I'm really here to talk about the problems that the consistent increases in property taxes has caused to the residents. Uh, the renters, and also the small business owners. It's not sustainable that you keep on increasing property taxes. So I know it's not your fault. I've been in contact with the Association of Homeowners, with Jordan. We've had a number of discussions. And so I propose just three questions to you that I would like to get an answer from. One, what are your plans to curtail the municip municipal spending Reduce the budget, separate from the school issue. So that's number one, because you can't keep on adding staff, you can't keep on increasing budgets because you keep on raising the taxes. Number two, let's talk about the education. We know that the education budget is the largest chunk of the taxpayer's money. That's where it goes. But our education system in Asbury Park is a disgrace. So have you thought about calling in a state audit? to see what's going on with these people and to force some of these school boards out of office and get responsible administration that is accountable. So what is your role in dealing with this failing school district that costs us more money than any other part of the budget for Asbury Park? And the third question is, the developers get abatements for 30 years, 20 years, I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm told that they do not contribute to the school budget. That's kind of discriminatory. We all pay for this. Why are these people not having to pay? So there are the three questions I would like to hear some responses from you. That's all I have to say. I leave it to you. Okay. Uh, I'll touch on the budget a little bit. We're, we're, we know the taxes are high. You know, the taxes are high. We know why the taxes are high. That's why the past couple of years, if you look at this city's budget, we tried to keep them flat because the Board of Education is going up. I'm not going to fib to you. Uh, right now we're in the budget process and we're looking at the numbers and we're trying to crunch the numbers so we don't come in with a high tax increase. But a lot of the stuff you want to control is out of our hands. I realize that. No, just even on the city side, where you have negotiated raises, the state dictates what we pay in the state health benefits plan, and that goes up every year. Last year, I think it was 23%. Uh, and pensions. also pensions. That, so, I mean, that's like a purview as part of the city budget that we have no say over that's dictated by the state. So that's where we are on the budget. As far as working together with the Board of Education, we have met with them in the past. Uh, we've offered to meet with them again because their budget has to be adopted by the end of March, which is right around the corner. Ours doesn't have to be. They're on a count, a fiscal year budget, July 1 through June 30th, and we're on a calendar year budget. The problem with the school budget is, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, like you see the tax increase for the school budget in 2023, that's only half of them because their budget is 2023 slash 2024. So automatically their budget's going up. Now how much more we've suggested to the Board of Education that other districts throughout the state have gotten loans for many different reasons. So we suggested, why don't you reach out to Trenton and see if you can get a $10 million loan to offset a $10 million increase that you can pay back, say a million dollars a year, and it could be sustainable. So we have reached out to them with some ideas. Uh, we're gonna have a meeting with them soon, but they're under the gun, and again, with the Board of Education numbers, you know, the best place to go there is the Board of Education meetings. Oh, I hear you. And then... And they just had an election. And then as far as developers, any development in the beachfront, so the waterfront redevelopment area, by law, has to get a pop. 
we can't do anything about that. That was passed by a previous council, so they have to get a pilot. And under a pilot, the city gets 95%, the county gets 5%, where I'm going to say under normal conventional taxes, the city would get about 40%, the Board of Education 45%, and the county 15%. So under a pilot, we're getting 95%, so we're using that money. Whatever the school board adopts as their budget, by state law, we have to pay. So if it's coming out of the pilot money or other money or whatever, we have to pay that by state law. So whatever their budget is, we have to pay. So if we're getting 95% instead of 40%, we can use some of that 55% to pay the tax, you know, to pay that bill of theirs. Right. Have you requested a state efficiency order of the school system? Myself and the council personally? No. No, no, sir. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. And Joanne, if anybody wanted to add anything? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, Sylvia Sylvia, Executive Director for the Asbury Park Chamber of Commerce. Um, try to make this quick. Um, first, welcome. And um, I hear you're knocking it out of the park. Um, oh, nice you. to meet you in person. Um, I uh, wanted to just congratulate you guys on um, the grant that you received for the uh, boardwalk preservation. That uh, I read that application process when it was released, and that was daunting. At first, I looked at it and I was like, "Oh, this isn't so bad," but it was. It was work. It was a lot, and to be able to get twenty million dollars for Asbury out of a $100 million allotment for the entire shore is really, it speaks volumes to me. Um, uh, more than the, uh, the commitment that the state has to preservation, but also the um, importance of the uh, tourism industry um, uh, recovery after COVID-19 and to see there were 18 communities that were successful in their applications at, at Asbury Park and Atlantic City both got $20 million each, um, which is the highest number. So it sounds to me like uh, our 1.4 square mile city here is really important to the economic health of the state. So thank you for what you did and, um, and uh, Madison Marquette uh, between both um, entities. It must have been just absolutely grueling, but thank you. You did a fantastic job. And I'm proud of you. Um, I'm always proud of you, you know that. Um, I have several things that are coming up. Um, I'm going to just recommend that any details that anybody might want uh, to visit our website at asburyparkchamber.com, but we've got the St. Patrick's Day Parade coming up on March 10th, um, and you probably are aware um, our Grand Marshal is Carrie Martin from Second Life Bikes. Um, we've got a joint business expo with Jersey Shore Chamber of Commerce at the Berkeley on April 16th, then April 17th, we've got networking at the Lanes, April 21st is restaurant tour, and we are um, using that again as a fundraising um, uh, opportunity to support uh, Mercy Center's, um, their, uh, their pantry. Uh, they're serving now 6,000 people a month, as opposed to 300 a month back in 2021. So we're really excited about that. Um, and I also, I have a couple of flyers that I got um, from a friend at the NJEDA. Uh, there's, they're having a, um, a conference for small business. I'm going to leave this over there, and I'm going to email it to everybody so that you have it also. It's on March 12th. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sylvia. And just to, uh, you remind me something I should have announced before. Sunday, March 3rd at the Berkeley Oceanfront Hotel, which I call the Berkeley Carteret, but then again, I call Jersey Shore University Medical Center, Fick and Hospital. So I guess I'm old. Uh, so at the Berkeley Sunday is the Asbury Park Fishing Club show. It's the 31st year. It's considered to be the best fishing show on the Jersey Shore. Uh, 
and the great thing about it is Joey Pilato, who's the president, donates the entire gate proceeds. The show's Sunday, the following Wednesday. I'll be here handing out $10,000 worth of checks to Asbury Park, uh, be it Little League, Boys Club, uh, Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, recreation, a lot of things. So that's Sunday the 3rd at the Berkeley and People sleep overnight to get in line to buy the best plugs because some of these plugs for fishing never go in the water. They're made so fantastically that they're pieces of art and somebody will go there and buy it and put it on eBay and sell it for five times and what they paid for it in two hours. So, but great club, Asbury Park Fishing Club, the oldest saltwater fishing club in the country. Sorry, I didn't say that before, but thank you, Sylvia, for reminding me. Okay, Rita. Okay, your three minutes are up. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're right. I apologize. <laughs> Hi, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Uh, I know ways you could cut corners. One of them is not to have professionals at a shade tree commission. I thought that was ridiculous. I mean, these two, including Fred, I mean you too. I mean, why do we have professionals? at a simple meeting. But like the Shade Tree Commission, they don't know anything about public property. They were interested in fixing the old things, the trees, the flowers. That's what their job is, and I thank them. But why do we have professionals too? The engineer and the attorney. It's not I mean, that's one way you could cut corners. The other way is that you don't have to get new cars every three years. I mean, it's Spring Lake, go to Spring Lake. Their cars are about 10 years old, maybe older. I, and there's so many ways you could cut corners to save a tax dollar. And uh, let me think of another way. Oh, I think you should have a study done about how many people are working in this building. I mean, like, I, I go back to the 70s. There was only 12 people, and they had typewriters. They didn't have a computer. So I think you should do a real study on, maybe you can get hire people to just to be part-time and not paying a pension or anything else. I don't know what else they could get. But there's many ways you could cut corners, and I think you ought to start thinking about that. And the other thing I wanted to say, why do we have to give Madison Marquette any money? They're in default. What does that mean? Is that a piece of paper? Why do we have to? I think I read they were going to get $13 million. Is that right? I'll let you finish. 13? I'll let you finish for your three minutes. Okay. And then the bathrooms, I think somebody quoted, are they going to be made of gold? Some of the $7 million. So somebody made a comment about that, and I thought it was kind of funny because $7 million for bathrooms? I don't know. Where are they going anyway? But are they going in the convention hall? Or? No, it said the south side of the boardwalk. So... There's lots of ways you could cut corners, many ways. So you should, but you should try because it's getting outrageous, the tax rate. And I think we need a reassessment because I've been checking out properties on all these places in Asbury. A lot of them are getting away with murder because I know what my taxes are. And I've checked three okay. buildings. Okay. Time's already. up. For you to finish your sentence and then I'll do Okay. It. But I think you should get the town reassessed. Okay. Because it's not right. Whoa, 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 whoa. No cross conversations. No cross conversations. Rita, I'm going to answer some of your questions. Okay. Don't always believe what you read in the newspapers. When it said we're spending $7 million for bathrooms, it was a terrible. Quote, so <laughs> the city got $7 million. The city gave no money to Madison Marquette. The state of New Jersey did. 
So the city gave no money to Madison Marquette. So you were wrong there. And as far as like the gold bathrooms, there's going to be two new bathrooms, like the ones on the north end, on the south side of Convention Hall, on First Avenue and Fourth Avenue, very similar to the ones, uh, the new ones on the north end. And no, they do not cost seven million dollars. Seven million dollars includes all the decking, all the railing, all the ADA ramps, and other necessities to get the boardwalk up to 100 percent primo. So it's not seven million dollars for bathrooms. Okay. Okay. That, that, that was on Facebook. Well, <laughs> it's got to be true, John. It's got to be true. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, all right. So I hope you like some of my comments. <laughs> we, we, can give you, we can give you the numbers of how many people work in City Hall. Absolutely. We can give you that. Okay. Also, I'm just going to address the shade tree. So the irony of this is that for 17 years, I've been on the shade tree commission. And in 17 years, we've never had professionals at those meetings. Well, we did have professional at those meetings, Rita, when we were talking about the shrubs that you've lodged a complaint about that are next door to you. And there had to be a determination by our professionals on whether or not they were a safety hazard. Our professionals came in, presented to the commission, and we ultimately made a decision. So the only time in my 17 years on the Shade Tree Commission are a result of shrubs that you had some questions about and a report with professionals explaining the report. Okay, but they were still on public property. So that's your- We can have the professionals back and have them back and explain it again, Rita. No, you don't have to. He did a traffic report. Okay, thank you. On two houses, and the traffic report was Hello, Felicia Simmons, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park, um, President and Executive Director of the Westside Community Center. I'm here today um, listening to all the great things happening in town and um, just know on my side of town that it's not the same. Um, my community center celebrates a birthday this month, 83 years, 1941. It was donated by the, one of the first black doctors in the area to the community to pro promote mental health and equity. Um, in 1941, predating the Urban League out of Newark, an important bit of history that you can't find <coughs> on anything when you Google Asbury Park. I'm sitting here listening to Sylvia Sylvia talk about the importance of Asbury Park to the um, framework of New Jersey, but my Asbury Park is being forgotten, left behind, um, just washed away. When you talk about history, my history is in the West Side Community Center. My mother's history is in the West Side Community Center. Their parents donated that to the West Side Community Center. If you talk from age 80, 83 years. So for 83 years, it's generated love, respect, <coughs> doctors, lawyers, engineers, dancers, pastors, janitors, everyone went through those gates and to see it at a space where we decide we didn't go and say we're going to wait for somebody else after seeing decades of um, misdoing we decided that out of our own hands out of our own dollars out of our own love of history we're going to rebuild it and we are severely hoping that the city um, does the same after just receiving what we received the other day we are not going away we are putting, we're 10 toes down, as we say, right? We have history, there's music, there's love there, right? It was donated by multicultural people, but it was the people of here. Only a few years out of, out of slavery, in the midst of Jim Crow, right? Jim Crow North, they decided to do something wonderful here. And that is history for the world not just for a small portion of us, but it's everybody's history and it's important to everyone. And I just wanna say that I, we are here, we're not going anywhere, we're gonna to continue to work and um, move forward to make sure that it is a place for my son, he didn't get a chance to grow up there because it was in disarray, but his son will, right, or his daughter will have a chance to be there. So that is our time. Just want to say happy birthday, Westside Community Center. 
September, uh, February of 1941. So thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. And I just uh, <clears throat> want to say something I know you're aware of. Uh, I believe this council has done more for the West Side than any council since 1970. Uh, the West Side, especially Springwood Avenue, was knocked down in 1970. First, we built the Springwood Avenue. No, first, the Interfaith in the city built the senior center in uh, Kula. Then the park was built, and we had Renaissance build multiple units on Springwood Avenue. And Boston Way was knocked down from a 1940s project to buildings that look like condos. Uh, Interfaith has built and continues to build. They just built 10 standalone uh, houses with garage apartments behind them so people, low-income people can buy them and rent them out to pay their mortgage. Uh, you talk about history, Diane Shelton and her group is leading the charge to do the history of, Boston, of uh, Springwood Avenue, which the city is totally backing and uh, supporting, where there's gonna be plaques where all the stores were. So to say that we're totally neglecting the West Side, I take a little bit of a disagreement with you, and I'll leave it at that. I think you need to run that through case. I never said that the city is neglecting. I said that is not being um, initiated by this part and is being forgotten. Well, well, we, we, okay. Cool. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good <laughs> evening, Moore, uh, Mayor Moore, council people. Um, is that red indicating the temperature in here? Or <laughs> I can turn down the heat and then they all yell at me they're cold. And you're right. It's terrible. It's hot. pretty close to what's in here. But anyway, yeah. uh, I got here. I arrived late, so I don't know what this is. A uh, session for commenting on yes. a certain particular anything subject. And everything. Or is this in general for the Anything and everything you want to say, you got Two minutes and whatever left. Okay, uh, this is regarding our property taxes. Okay. And uh, I'm a property owner. I have been for 40 years. Very fortunate to be here 40 years. Can I get your name and address, sir? I'm sorry? Your name and address for the record. Oh, Robert Resminis. Thank you. 601 and 603 First Avenue. Um, I'm here tonight because uh, we're all hardworking people here. We all work for a living, especially me. Well, you know, I'm called defense guy, so a lot of you know me, some you don't. But anyway, I'm blessed living in this city for all these years, praise the Lord. Um, we're all hardworking people here, but there's, I don't think anybody is as hardworking in this particular time as that person sitting there in the front row in the suit, Michael Delray. He's our tax assessor, I'm sure you know him. I had met him yesterday in Freehold for my appeal on my taxes. My, my subject is the fact that we're getting taxed at an increasingly rate every year. Um, from what I understand, the ATP program was initiated in 2014 for an audit you know, by the state for our property valuations. And it's been continuing now for almost 10 years. And um, I have basically a 60% increase in my taxes the last two years. And it's getting very challenging to keep my properties. And I think I'm not the only one alone here that feels this, uh, Mayor Moore. So my question to you and the council is, is there any way we can remedy this by basically get asking the state to get off our backs and opt out of this uh, reassessment like some other towns, they get reassessed every eight to 10 years, which I'm fine with that. I'm also fine with, I know my properties are worth more money every year, I understand that. But uh, again, uh, I'm a renter, I'm you know, a landlord, I rent. Um, you have rent control now in, 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 in on the ordinance, so. I'm restricted in raising my tenants' rents, and I never try to raise my tenants' rents, but with a 60% increase, I mean, just it's, it's either I raise my rent or I sell the building. But even though selling it, it's still at not market because the restrictions of the rent control still apply to the new owner. So I really won't get a fair value for my property as you know the city has been assessing it all this time. So my question again is to you is if you can work out some sort of plan with the state to freeze this reassessment every year and hold us for a couple of years so we can at least catch up somehow. Okay, thank you, Robert. Uh, okay, thank you. 
Yeah, before you got here, uh, Dr. Gallucci brought up a similar question. Okay. Uh, taxes are high, and taxes are going to be high again this year. And I'm not blaming it on the Board of Education. I'm blaming it on the S-2 bill. It was passed in Trent. And as far as, like, yearly reassessments, like, I'm going to say, say we're talking about the past 10 years. The, fir the first seven years of yearly reassessments, Nobody had a problem with because the S2 impact did not hit. No, I understand. Now that the S2 impact clobbered us last year and is going to clobber us again this year, people are like, maybe this, maybe that. We'll look into it. But, you know, a yearly reassessment. If somebody came in and bought a house next to me for three years ago, bought a house next to me for $300,000, and now it's worth a million dollars, I'd be ticked off. I'm paying a million and he's paying 300000 so there's good and bad, and we got to look at everything combined. We have reached out, as we told Dr. Gallucci, to the Board of Education. We've suggested to them that they go to the state. Towns throughout the state have borrowed money from the state for boards of education for unique circumstances. Asbury Park has a unique circumstance. We're getting clobbered with taxes, and if we don't get some money quick, we're going to lose the fabric of the Asbury Park, like Felicia talks about, we talk about, which we don't want to lose. So again, like what I suggested to them, and they're going to have a meeting with the uh, Senator Gopal and people at the state level. If you're giving a hundred million dollar loan to Lakewood, and you know Lakewood's never going to pay it back, can Asbury Park get a ten million dollar loan so we don't have this monstrous tax increase this year, and the Board of Education can pay it back? And I'm just making this up. Well, I'm spitballing. Board of Education can pay it back. Pay it back. Not forget about it. Can pay it back $1 million a year over the next 10 years. We are in discussions with the Board of Education to try to figure this out. Again, I do not blame the Board of Education. I blame the state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey <coughs> will not tell us, will not tell you, will not tell the governor the formula for funding for education. The only thing we know for sure, part of it's enrollment. The rest of it is all guess. So it is, a, it is a mess that we're trying to work together with everybody to try to make sure we don't have another brutal tax increase this year because what happened last year, the good landlords yeah. like yourself who hadn't given like 10% increase raises to their tenants every year got clobbered and they had to. So it's we're, we're working on it. Well, who, who do who we get in touch with? What are senators, Congress? Is there names that we can call and write to and ask them to help us? You know, Sen Senator Gopal, Assemblywoman uh, Donlin and Peter Paul are our representatives. And it's state, so that's who you want to talk to. And also attend Board of Education meetings. Okay. Because we need to get Mike Del Rey, uh, Rey a raise, so we really don't want to strap ourselves anymore. But Mike, great job. I just got to give credit where it's due. Thank I've you seen him. Work, and by the way, he's a very approachable person, you know, uh, in his position. So, you know, uh, he, he really is as good as Eric Algler. Maybe better, but <laughs> thanks, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure he appreciates that. Seeing nobody else, motion to close. We have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The participation portion is now closed. So hold on for 30 seconds. Anybody that stayed for the presentation, if you want to get out of here quick, because we have business to go, so don't stand around, talk, take it outside, and we can go on with our business. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Hey, Joanne. Thank you. How are you? Ben, how are you? Good, you look great. Question. I think I didn't maybe realize or understand. I wanted to make a comment or question. I have two questions on the ordinance for short term rentals. Oh, you can but skip. I thought I was jumping. Is that. So it's first to... reading, you have it at second reading, but honestly, you should reading. email us the, the comment or question first so we can think about it before second reading. Okay. Yeah. Where are email me. So, yeah, email me. Just Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Email me and I'll get it to the right people. I appreciate it. Can you please take your conversations outside? We still have a meeting to run. Quiet in the chambers, please. Please take all conversations outside. Okay. Mm -hmm.
We are now on to the minutes. Are the executive meeting minutes and regular meeting minutes of February 14th, 2024? Do I have a motion? You know, move it. Move it. Somebody needs to second. May I have a second? A second. Council Member Bez Anderson. Yes. Council Member Chapman. Yes. I have to abstain. Thank you. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to individual resolutions. Individual resolutions. Resolution 2024-133. Resolution approving payment of bills. Move it. Um, I just want to announce uh, Mayor Moore is voting no on PO 2400318. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. You Mayor removed, Moore. You removed the one earlier. Yes. Right? yes. That's gone. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Resolution 2024-134, resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for the 2024 budget. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-135, resolution authorizing the purchase of food for the Black History Month event. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024 136, resolution approving change order number 10 for Memorial Drive Improvements Project. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. No. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024 137, a resolution awarding contract to Millennium Communications Group for yearly camera support and service. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024 138, resolution awarding a contract for Sunset Lake Pond Management. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024 139 has been removed from tonight's agenda. We're now on to resolution 2024 140. Resolution amending a contract with John Guire for snow plow repairs needed. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024 141. Resolution establishing fees and regulations for the 2024 beach season. Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Uh, resolution 2024 142, resolution authorizing appointments to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. The appointee is Natalie Passerini as alternate member number one with a term to expire January 15, 2026. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-143, uh, resolution authorizing the fire department to apply for a training grant from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and the Department of Homeland Security, DHS. Do I have a motion? Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Say yes. 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 Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-144, resolution deferring the due date for business license application fees for 2024 through April 1st, 2024. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2024-92, resolution authorizing professional services contract to Hackensack Meridian Team Health PC for employment exams and physicals. Okay. I understand maybe a motion to table. table. Are we table? Yes. Someone? Second. This is a motion to table. Yeah, this is a roll call vote. Thank you. And now we're on, we're on to a roll call vote it's to a, table this resolution until, from the heat until further notice. <laughs> Council member Bez Anderson. You're too cold, so make up your mind. Council member Bez Anderson. Yes? Yes. It's a table. She knows. It's a table. Thank you. Thank Council member Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to ordinances. Ordinances for introduction. I have ordinance 2024-4. Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending and supplementing Article 13-1300 entitled Short-Term Rentals of Part 2 Rental Property of Chapter 13 Property Improvement and Neighborhood Preservation Property Maintenance Code of the Code of the City of Asbury Park with a public hearing date of March 13, 2024. Do I have a motion? Move it. 
Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to second reading public hearings of ordinances. I have ordinance 2024-3, ordinance of the city of Asbury Park, amending and supplementing certain sections of chapter five entitled Beach Boardwalk and Beachfront Regulations of the Code of the City of Asbury Park in certain limited respects. Fred, would you be able to give us a brief overview of this ordinance? Yes, this ordinance provides the city with more flexibility in setting the beach views so that you can accept them by resolution, uh, which is a simpler process rather than uh, doing it by ordinance, which requires uh, two readings and changing the same code. Uh, thank you. May I have a motion to open the public hearing on Ordinance 2024 Move to open. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing on Ordinance 2024 3 is now open. If any member of the public would like to speak on Ordinance 2024 3, Please use the microphone. Move to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Public hearing on Ordinance 2024-3 is now closed. We have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2024-3. Move to adopt. Second. Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. I also just have one resolution that I forgot to read. This is resolution 2024-145, resolution recognizing and declaring February 28th, 2024 as Jesse May Rick's Day in the city of Asbury Park. Do I have a motion? Okay. Move yes. it. Move it. <laughs> Councilmember Bez Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. No one has anything else. We're on to adjournment. Yes. Move to adjourn. May I have a second? Is there a second to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.